Hey everyone, it's Katarina again here today with you. And I wanted to make a video today just talking about emotional triggers and how valid they are in your process. And also what to do about them. Because I know sometimes they can seem a little overwhelming and you don't really know exactly where to go from your state of confusion and your state of overwhelm. You know, for me, oftentimes what I would experience when I had an emotional trigger would be this sense of a, a tightening in my heart. And it would be very overwhelming in the sense that I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't really run away from it and I couldn't walk away from it. It was something that was overwhelming my whole experience. And it's tricky because oftentimes what you want to do is, is escape from it and sometimes that makes you want to go drink a lot of alcohol or go smoke a lot of pot or you know spend a lot of time with people just to get away from yourself. But there's something really amazing that can happen for you when you allow yourself the space to be able to allow the emotions to come forth and for them to be able to be heard. And it's not always an easy thing to sit there in the space of aloneness and allow things to emerge from the darkest depths of your unconscious mind. But it's really important for you to not push them away though. Because that's why they're there. It's because they've been pushed away, pushed away, pushed away, repressed. and and ignored for so long and it's really hard to say how long they've been ignored but sometimes it's been years sometimes it's been you know decades even but for those of you who are brave enough to take the challenge of actually sitting with yourself and seeing what's unconsciously there waiting for you to unwrap it like a present you may be pretty surprised at the healing that can come from that there's so much healing that is available to you if you're allowing yourself to just sit there and experience it. I mean, catharsis, oh, you know, last night, for example, hang on, let me grab a picture. But, um, I, I have had a lot of experiences this past month just with catharsis and you know grief and everything like that um, I mean that's why a lot of my videos are this theme is because I'm this is what I'm actually going through right now and I wanted to you know pass it along to you because I'm gaining a lot of insight and wisdom throughout all of this as well and you know it's, it's nice for me to be able to share this in this way so thank you for listening anyway but you know a lot of you know that I'm an artist and a lot of you might be aware that I started making art more as therapy and an art using art as therapy for me when I was going through really really dark periods of depression and everything when I was a teenager and it just has stuck with me because it's it's a really useful tool you know listening to music and allowing that emotion to really reson resonate and ring true within my own being and the emotions and the feelings come forth as a result of listening to the music or you know being engaged with the act of creating artwork um, you know the triggers present themselves and they're usually a stressful thought and what happens when you're paying attention to that stressful thought and you're really like focusing in on it you get to experience a whole array of different other emotions and a whole bunch of different other experiences that are you know past history events like they flash across your mental screen like a movie and they can trigger more of the emotions and more of the crying and you know they're more like flashbacks in that sense and you know it's it's really easy for us to want to avoid those uh, experiences because the flashbacks may be painful the the feelings of emotion coming through you may physically be painful and that's really where you need to have a lot of compassion with yourself and allow yourself to just open up to those emotions and those experiences flooding through and to not get 
caught up in trying to push them aside too soon and trying to, you know, negate your experience by saying, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this because this isn't spiritual or this isn't positive or this isn't, you know, in line with my values in the sense that I want to be a happy person all the time. You know, people who are happy, genuinely happy all the time are happy because they allow themselves to feel what they're genuinely feeling. And if you have been feeling deadened inside for a little while, like a, a frozen stillness almost, there's most likely some grief you haven't been processing and some depression there. And that's just stuck energy in your being. And so when you allow yourself to actually mobilize it, and music is a really good mobilizer of energy, so is dancing and singing and, um, you know, painting, drawing, using your expression and allowing everything to come from your core to allow you know those really painful songs to be sung to allow those painful pictures to be drawn to allow yourself to curl up into a fetal position and just wail your heart out if that's really what you need to do by all means do it because you're going to save yourself years of pain for you know the trade-off of maybe five minutes ten minutes fifteen minutes of, you know authentic emoting you know, um, I had a big moment of just straight up tears yesterday and I was really happy that it came because for a couple days I had been feeling frozen inside and not really able to access that, that deep release that I knew that I needed because I'm very in tune with my emotional body and I'm very in tune with the fact that when there's something stuck here, it just feels off. There, there feels like a heaviness on my chest and that makes sense because we are energetic beings primarily we this is our light body this is this is the body that we carry around with us is not physical in the sense that we think of it as we are energetic beings and when there is stuck energy in our body our, 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 our body just doesn't function properly so that's why it's very important to clear these emotions and to allow them to pass through you so they don't stay stuck and create disease and illness. And I mean, ancient Chinese medicine knows this, you know, naturopathic medicine knows this, mainstream media is catching up with this. And, you know, it's, that's why I'm such an advocate and proponent of this is because tremendous healing is available to you at any moment you choose it. So. I was, I was just going to share with you this little picture that I did yesterday and it says um, the moments of agonizing darkness and immeasurable pain, you know, and it feels like your heart is on fire and you're just sobbing and you're just allowing the tears to come, you know, maybe snot's dripping down your face and, and you're just in this pure state of emoting. And it's easy for people to want to push that away because it's uncomfortable to look at and it's uncomfortable to experience, especially if you're around other people, because we're not used to actually having those kinds of displays of emotion in public. And we're not used to being real with ourselves and with others. You know, we kind of, we're just like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then we just discard and discredit our experience. The problem with that though, is that so much of our process gets unresolved it's it's left undone and it's on left unfinished you know when you're experiencing an emotional trigger i'm sure that the first thing one of you most of you out there actually do is kind of set it aside and we're just like eh, i'll deal with that later you know you get bad news from a friend or you know for instance your ex-boyfriend tells you they moved on like happened with me you know and <laughs> It's just, there's a shock. Your body goes into a shock. Your emotions go into a shock. And it's, a, it's, it's, it's very rare that we're able to access that emotion right, right up front and experience the catharsis right then. And then it takes some time sometimes for us to actually be able to process and deal with it. But it is important that we process and deal with it, otherwise we're losing part of our totality. We're losing part of our wholeness because we have neglected a part of ourself, a very important part of ourself, you know, the little child inside of us that just wants to be loved and adored and cared for. 
you know, we're, we're, we're bastardizing it and pushing it out and being like, no, you don't belong here. I'm going to be the strong person that's happy all the time and I'm happy for you and that's really great and I'm, and I, I'm so glad for you, you know, but all the while there, there, there's a piece of us that's, that's, that's hateful and angry and spiteful and, you know, it's just trying to jump up and just be seen. And then it comes out in weird ways, like symptoms of, you know, you, you know your heart is tense and it's painful. You know, these kinds of things are associated with heart attacks, heart failure, you know, all of these things because our, our organs are emotional too. They experience the same energy that our brain and our emotions are experiencing. So it's important to really be aware of your body as a whole system and to not marginalize aspects of yourself. When, when you feel shame, when you feel triggered in any way, shape, or form, it's really important for you to acknowledge it. And whether that means you're writing about it, or you're talking about it, or you know, crying or singing about it, you are expressing it. You are expressing it so it can come to completion and pass. And then you can come back to your state of presence and peace. And it's not a false peace, and it's not a peace where you're pretending and and feeling like 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 there's parts of you missing. I mean, in shamanism, there is an idea of having totality being reclaimed by retrieving parts of yourself that you left behind on the journey. And when you have that wholeness there's a sense of presence and, and an luminescence about you because you're all here. There's not parts of you stuck in the past. There's not parts of you stuck in, you know, old relationships and old, old hurts and wounds. And they're getting constantly re-triggered because they haven't actually healed. So I hope that this helps you in some way, shape or fo form because I mean, this is, this is just what's helping me currently right now, and and I'd like to get your feedback on this and ask you, like, what is it that you do when you have an emotional trigger, when you have something very strong happen in your experience and it overwhelms you? What do you do? I'd like to know, and just let me know in the comments below. Send me a private message, whatever you'd like to do, but please... Um, just pay attention to how you're feeling. Don't, don't leave any part of you behind. Take care.